In the receivers section of the B6800 you can have up to two receivers. To start, receiver 1 is enabled and receiver 2 is disabled. To edit or configure these settings, click on the pencil icon to the right. From here you can rename and renumber the receiver. Toggle the enable button to enable or disable the receiver. Information on receiver creation, edits and versions of the different layers of software are displayed here. This can be helpful if contacting tech support is necessary. The connection field displays the host address for the panel coming into the receiver. The host address displayed is the virtual machine that is running. It is the actual machine IP address connected to the receiver. This address may be different if it is behind a router, a firewall, or virtual local area network VLAN. Displayed is the actual physical address. The virtual host address is for a failover scenario. Failover would have a virtual address that is maintained between two different servers. In this example, by default, we don't have failover configured. This will be covered in another section. The panel listener port is the port that panels will communicate to. The default is 7700. Each receiver requires a unique port number. Our second receiver is set to 7701 by default. The eye icons provide additional information in regard to that field. Automation displays the parameters for sending information to the automation system. Choose the transport protocol from the drop-down menu. UDP is our legacy protocol. You need to know what the name or IP address of the server that the automation system is listening on. Also, what port is automation listening on? In this example we are a client and automation is a server. More commonly with DCP IP, we become a listener and these other fields are grayed out and display what our network info is internally. These settings would be configured during installation. Automation profile allows us to select which of our profiles we want. We can have multiple, or as many as we need. Timeout is how long the receiver waits for an acknowledgement back from automation before creating an event. The polling interval is how often does the receiver ping the automation system to let it know that the receiver is still alive and talking. You can set the number of max transmit retries before the automation system creates an event. Input parameters are related to the Kinetics IP communication protocol when there is something being sent from this account number but the keys don't match. This could be due to a reply or a key is out of sync or the panel has been replaced. Under customization section you may toggle alerts sounds enabled for an audible notification. Alert sounds will occur if automation is disabled and events need to be acknowledged manually, or if the receiver or automation goes down. Use virtual account forces the system to use virtual account numbers instead of the actual panel account numbers. This is helpful if a panel has multiple areas with different account numbers. For example, area 1 is 1234 and area 2 is 1235. Virtual account would override the 1235 and only use whatever is programmed in the account. Toggle input encryption enabled on if encryption is being used. Input pre-configured encryption keys or select the type of encryption being used and generate a key. The generated key can be copied and used for people that are configuring and programming the panels or the dialer capture devices in the field with the encryption key. 3x1 and 4x2 mapping are more common in legacy, dialer capture pulse formats and can be configured here if necessary. When you have finished, scroll back to the top and click the save and close button. Note, changes to automation will restart components of the receiver in the background and could take about 30 seconds. The second receiver can be used with encryption or to isolate systems. These receivers are completely independent. This is the advantage of having two receivers built into one system.